Welcome back my lovely sisters. Today we're talking about modesty in terms of outward appearance because the way I understand modesty is it's both inward and outward. So today it's just about how we are dressing and what it means. Part of the reason I started this channel was so that I can address some of the issues in the church today pertaining to women. One of the issues I see completely being mishandled or twisted, misrepresented is modesty. I've spoken to some women online who claim to be part of the church but have this really warped idea of what it means and have changed the meaning of it in such a way that uh, men can't have a say in it and that it removes the beauty and the purity from a, a woman's body and you know the privacy of a woman's body. So what you end up with is women who consider themselves really spiritual and having this deep understanding of what it means to dress in a way that pleases God, but completely disregarding how it affects men, turning the matter into a woman's issue rather than the fact being that modesty exists for the sake of men and to honor God. So I want to bring the perspective and the focus back on what modesty is and what it means and how it plays out in our lives as women. So as I said, there are two kinds of modesty, the inward modesty and the outward modesty. The outward modesty would be how we dress, the kind of clothes we wear, how we present ourselves to the world and the public eye. The inward modesty and the outward modesty go hand in hand. I've noticed that when the one is divorced from the other, it's no longer modesty. So I'll get into that in another video, but today we'll focus on the outward. So what is the point of modesty? The point is to help men not to fall into temptation towards us. Those men are specifically any man who is not your husband. When it comes to your husband, you are supposed to be as sensual and exciting to him physically as possible. It should be your pleasure to entice and please him physically. Two different rules apply completely, but at the same time, that is what modesty means. It means you're keeping that uh, sensuality of yourself for your husband and not giving it away to other men outside the context of marriage. And all of this brings honor and glory to God. It's his design and it shows a true reverence for God. So the Spirit has been working on me um, over the years and helping me understand better and better how serious the matter is of dressing properly, why it's so important you know, to take into account how, how we dress affects men. So I'm really starting to see how evil and deceitful it is to dress in a way that is designed to uh, provoke men to lust, to make men stumble when they look at you, and to be seeking admiration and attention through the way you dress. That is a very carnal, worldly pursuit. The reason why it took me so long to understand this is is written up on my blog so I won't go into that now but if you want to read about my personal journey through struggling with the concept of being beautiful and modesty and wanting to be attractive um, you can read about it on my blog and I'll link it in the description box for you. But what I mean by physical modesty is something deeper than just rules and regulations about lengths of skirts and sleeves and collar lines and t tailoring. It's not about that. Yes, that is a part of it, but the approach you have shouldn't be about a one-size-fits-all for all women because we are all very differently shaped. We all have these different proportions and making a hard and fast rule for all of us doesn't work. It can really come off immodest on one woman and perfectly modest on another simply because that cut or design might accentuate something sensual about that woman that wasn't supposed to. So we have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis which means each woman is responsible for taking careful note and wanting to learn and know what is modest. 
what causes problems for men and you know most of it is intuitive we should know you know that cleavage and overly tight butt area and showing your midriff all that should naturally feel uncomfortable for you but there are some other aspects that we women don't completely grasp we don't understand how men are triggered you won't understand it until you get married until you've been married for a few years will you actually begin to understand so as a young woman you need to listen to your elders you need to listen to your parents you need to listen to your brothers anyone who's making a valid point about how you're dressing i will talk about invalid points about modesty because there are those guys who <laughs> who seem to make it their job to point out everything that gives them occasion to lust when it's not necessarily a problem on the girl's part anyway i'll get back to that later but having said that having different body types doesn't excuse having a problem being modest about a certain part of your body if you have a particularly desirable asset on your body you should make it your top priority when you dress to not make that a focal point in the sense of provoking lust so you want to be cautious and you want to be considerate and if it actually comes down to the fact that you have to make your own clothes or make your own tops that actually fit your unusual proportions do that because it's worth it it's very important that as a church we are not known for being for provoking men for making them stumble and for being loose and sluttish in the way we dress that is very dishonoring towards christ and the name that we uphold what i just mean by that is if you have a particularly large bust and you struggle to find clothes that actually cover you up nicely they don't make the bust an issue and something the eyes always go towards it's not your fault and you're blessed so that's a good thing but you need to do what is necessary to not make that a problem for for other men if that means modifying your clothes or getting someone to make clothes for you or going to a certain store and finding a brand that works for you you need to do that it's important same goes for pants not all women can wear pants modestly some of us have very full round hips and it just draws the eye that is something you can't afford to do if you can't wear pants don't it's important that we dress in a becoming way that isn't uh, provoking so that can mean you wear dresses and skirts only and that is actually i think highly advisable for all women i think dresses and skirts are more becoming on women most men will agree with that i'm not going to say that pants are wrong for women to wear but in the age we live in now pants have gone way way over the line of what is appropriate for women and while there are a group of people who speak about this there is so much pushback against even being allowed to make comments on it that there is no there's no governance over this there's just no limit to what is acceptable to wear and uh, what is really causing young men problems because they can't go to church without seeing women in you know like their, their butts on full display it's just not right we have to think about these things we can't take these things lightly another thing to bear in mind is that we can't really consult with each other as women on what is modest what is there is a degree to which your friend can take a step back and say yes when you when i look at you from the back it's a bit see-through or something is not looking quite right you know my eye is drawn here so that's helpful but in terms of a good guideline of what is modest or not we have to listen to the men the men are the ones we are dressing for the whole reason that we have to dress modestly is so that we don't cause men to stumble just to clarify yes there are men who are weak and who haven't got mastery over their bodies and their responses and impulses who who need to learn mastery but that's not our business all men have to learn mastery but that does not give us an excuse to drop the standards we are responsible for what we do 
no matter what the man is responsible for. As a general guideline, I'd say listen to your husband. Get his feedback. Listen to what he says. Um, if you're not married, listen to your father. Your father will give you a good outline of what to be careful about. Not all fathers are very protective, so you might have to actually go directly to him and be quite pointed in asking, you know, what is safe and what is not. And then on the other hand, we also have a lot of young men today who are so accustomed to seeing women not properly dressed that their standards have also dropped and they've actually gotten used to it. So there is a degree to which we ourselves as women have to just keep the standard up regardless of what our husbands think is fine. What we instinctively know could be a problem. Use your own discernment. Listen to your husband. Listen to your father. Listen to your brothers. As I mentioned earlier, there will always be that guy in the community who makes it his job to point out every time he gets aroused by a woman. There is a point where that gets a bit out of hand and inappropriate because from the man's point of view because you know men do need to learn self-control and they learn, need to learn how to divert their eyes if something's causing a problem. Sometimes shall I say it's not the woman's fault. You know God did make us beautiful. That each part of our bodies are more finely made and designed to be attractive to men. We're not going to be covering our faces because that's attractive to men. You know, I don't believe your neck should be covered necessarily because, I mean, some countries get really hot and that's just not what the Bible is talking about. It's not talking about being covered from head to toe. We are talking about the intent with which you dress. If a man is struggling with seeing your ankle or your arm or your wrist, there's something he needs to work on. It's it's not necessarily you, but I'm not making excuses for us ladies. We really need to take this seriously. And that is why I think men need to go to the elders. You know, if there is an issue, a particular woman who is causing an issue in that area, someone who is in charge of her should be spoken to and he should deal with her. Like the father should tell his daughter, you know, she needs to uh, change her ways or the husband, you know. Um, in that way, you have a bit of a filtering process where there can be some consensus on it. We can't all cater to all the weaknesses of all the men. You know, at the end of the day, we've got to be practical and understand that modesty is a couple of basic things that need to be covered. And as for the rest of it, some men need to learn how to not be too easily triggered. That's just my take on it. That is why I listen to my husband because you you might even have some of your friends saying to you that, oh, that is too short or that is too this or that. It's going to cause my husband to stumble. You know, we can't cater. I can't cater for every single man out there because then I literally have to dress with a burqa, <laughs> and that's not that's not the biblical way. We are not being called to dress like Muslims. The point is to not dress with the intent of provoking and to cover what is necessary. That would be your chest area not showing cleavage. It would be dresses no shorter than say two thirds down your thigh and or just above the knee is good. Your midriff should be definitely be covered. Nothing too tight or too skimpy, you know. Cover what's necessary. Make sure you're not revealing anything private and you're good. Because at the end of the day, I really encourage making yourself lovely for your husband. And that's why you need to know what your husband wants. You need to learn what he likes and work towards that. You know, if he likes your hair, you know, bob, cut, you know, cut your hair like that and keep it like that. And every now and then check in with him if he still likes it like that. That should be our attitude towards our husbands. And that should go for our clothing as well, that we are doing it all for him. I know in my case, my husband is not always very thoughtful about what other men might think about me. So I also have to take care to maybe add a layer of modesty to what he would want me to wear outside the home. Uh, but for him specifically, it should be my joy and pleasure to do what, he, to dress in a way he enjoys and um, to please him in that way. And that should be a Christian woman's heart. Use common sense, listen to your husband, and 
make an effort to dress beautifully for him. Even though the Bible tells us that beauty is vain and charm is deceptive and that dressing yourself up with much exterior glamour is all vain and empty and meaningless. The Bible also tells us to love our husbands. If you love your husband, you will find out from him what he likes. Some men really don't like makeup. Some men don't like it when you do your hair up. Some men want you natural, like as natural as possible. Then that should be your look. That's what you should go for. Maybe focus on skincare and, and ensuring you eat healthy so you always have a glowing complexion. It all depends what he likes. It should be our pleasure to find out what it is. That is my take on modesty as far as the outward goes. As far as the inward goes, that is even more important. So I will have to do a separate video on that and um, you'll see how it ties in with the outward and how the two can't go separately. I will catch you next week. I haven't written blog posts in a little while. My apologies for that, but I will do so this week. So blessings and go well. Bye.